Hey everybody, a year later and we're back. We wanted to check in and get an update together on comparing markerless mocap solutions, specifically deep motion and radical. Last year, I recorded my friend John doing some movements and passed them through both systems to come to the conclusion that they were nearly interchangeable when plugged onto a UE4 based character. Things have definitely changed over the past year. I would go into the pricing plan and all that, but they're relatively the same as last year, minus some perks that each plan come with, which I'll get into a little bit later. The goal this time around was to be able to pull these animations from an iPhone, pass them through the systems, and plug them into a custom MetaHuman in UE5. Both processes stack up fairly evenly when bringing your footage into each software. DeepMotion has a few more options for you to apply your footage than Radical, and DeepMotion's processing time is significantly shorter about 30 seconds for a 10 second clip, while Radical was a few minutes for the same clip. It was fairly straightforward to get the deep motion skeleton and animation into UE5, but it took a significant amount of digging to track down the Radical skeleton and bring that into the engine. Once both were in the system, I took some time reacclimating myself with the UE5 retargeting system. From what I gathered, neither of these solutions had any straightforward way to retarget the animation onto the UE5 mannequin, never mind MetaHuman. So I ended up taking both into UE426, retargeted them there, then bringing the now UE4 animations into UE5 to retarget onto the new mannequin, then the MetaHuman. I'm by no means an expert when it comes to retargeting animations, but any missteps I made along the way were made to both animations equally. When I finally got everything sorted, I was shocked to see the differences between the animations. Here's the footage. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, there's barely even a comparison to make deep motion is far better than radical in terms of performance. Account wise, I was allowed only 10 second animations at a time in deep motion, which was a bit of a letdown and constrained my ability to test. This is still far better than radical, which forced me to upgrade to a paid account in order to export my first animation. It's really unfortunate that these services only have subscription options as opposed to charging per animation. I could see myself using these services much more frequently if they didn't have all of these different subscription options. Of course, as I was made aware in my video last year, there are now plenty of other solutions out there, but for the quick and dirty turnaround that DeepMotion provides, I'll always default to their services when I can't get my hands on an inertial suit. Thanks again for watching everyone. I've been a bit under the radar over the past year, but that'll be rapidly changing. If you have any questions about any part of the video or suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments. I really appreciate the support and I'm looking forward to learning more together.